So to really to, to, to wrap up here, we need some major paradigm shifts as far as how we uh, as individuals look at water and act on water. What's going to what's going to cause those shifts? I think occasions such as Davos are very useful. They bring home that this is not simply worrying that people in faraway lands don't have drinking water. And yes, please keep worrying about that. It's something that as human beings we can worry a lot about. But it's also saying, hey, I, this is one of the, this is adding to the list of things I really got to worry about uh, to, in order to be in business. And that that is good. There's been a fair amount, not enough, of media coverage. Uh, I hope that we can continue working with media to say, how do you understand these two circles of concern about water? Uh, how do you cover these? What's the non-sensational story? Uh, how do we make sure that we're not talking about real collapses and disasters in 10 years? Uh, these are actually happening in some places now. How do we make sure that these are not being universalized? Uh, how do we make sure that conditions are kept uh, as good as they can be in a number of places? I sat across from some business leaders yesterday saying, oh sure, we make our decisions about whether we're going to locate plants uh, wherever, you know, very much based on water availability. I said, you know, do you ever talk to the countries where you've decided not to be about water? No, 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 we wouldn't do that. We talked to the ones we ever decided to be. So in a sense, uh, you know, it's the growing awareness, I hope, of the countries that, are, that didn't get the jobs and didn't get the employment, that if they improve their water management, that they might improve also their economic prospects, their development, their employment, better life for people. I guess people wonder, well, what should I be doing about water? Well, you know, all of those funny little things about turning off the tap, uh, really being conscious that you don't need a 20-minute shower, uh, washing your car occasionally, not all the time. This really counts. Why does this count? Because, you know, I'm Canadian. We have 7 to 10 percent of the world's resources. Canadians say to me, surely I don't have to care about this. We've got all the water in the world. Well, you've got all the water in the world, but you're not using that river or that lake, which is all the water in the world. You're using something which has been collected, it's been piped, it's been chemically adjusted to make sure that it's pure. It is then transported, and at each stage of this, there's pumping, there's energy expense, uh, there is expense to the community that they could be using for other things. So every time you have a good long shower, you are sending carbon particles into the air just as thoroughly as that truck going down the road ahead of you, that you're looking at them and saying, this is why we have global warming. Well, next time you have a 20 minute shower, you're sending carbon particles into the air too, because somebody had to pump that water to get there, and that pump sent the carbon particles into the air. So yeah, you can do quite a bit about this by your water use. And it isn't just about water, it's about water, it's about energy, it's about a lot of things.